Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Mantrick, pastor at Central United Methodist Church right here in Waterford, Michigan. And this is my daily devotion for Wednesday, October 28th, 2020. Friends, we're talking about what it would mean for us to do anything short of sin to reach others with the love of Christ. What would you do in order to bring another person into Christ's uh, presence, into a loving relationship so that they understand uh, their incredible self-worth and how much they are loved and valued by our Creator God. And the story that I'd like to share comes from Mark's Gospel, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. I think you'll recognize this story. It's pretty well known. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking a word to them. Then some people came, bringing him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above them. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins have been forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins of, but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth as in heaven and on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified, saying, we have never seen anything like this. May God add a blessing to this reading and hearing of his holy word. You know, friends, it seems to me, and uh, I love to listen to other preachers, and uh, when I listen to Craig Groeschel talk about this particular scripture, he says, there's two things that you need to know. Uh, you need to know that if you want to reach people for Christ, you got to bear a burden and break some rules. So today I want to talk to you about bearing a burden. You know, there's this guy, this paralytic guy, and Jesus is teaching in a home, and they want to get this guy in front of Jesus. And you know, when preachers preach on this text, they often say, well, the paralytic man, these were four of his friends that took him to Jesus. And they very, might, they very well might have been friends, but it doesn't say that in the scriptures. In none of the uh, different versions of the scriptures that I read this passage from, did it say that they were good friends with this guy. They just said there were some people trying to get this man to Jesus. I sort of like that because I can kind of look at that and say, well, you know, He's a, you know, he might be a stranger to them. This paralytic man might be a stranger to those four. And yet they're going to uh, actually take action to make sure that he gets into the presence of Christ so that he might know healing and wholeness. So they, they get in there and they can't, they can't get into the house. In fact, what they experience is what I sometimes use as an analogy for the church. You know, the church huddles together. And we're loving on each other and we're caring for one another. Uh, you know, our backs are turned to the world. So sometimes when people come to a church, it seems like our backs are turned to them. Because they actually are sometimes. As we meet with each other and are interested in, in the lives of our church friends, sometimes people experience that as we're not caring for them as well. We're not welcoming to them. And so they went to that extra mile, these four people, whoever they were, these four men, they get up on the roof and they dug through the roof. Can you imagine what the owner of that home thought? Uh, you know, he says, well, I wonder if insurance is going to pay for that. But they dig through that roof. Now, what, now what were the roofs made in, during that day? Well, we think, you know, mud and thatch. And certainly that's true. But they also 
you may or may not know this, kind of gross, uh, but they also mix it with manure. And that manure actually uh, would contain or, or seeds from grass would grow on that roof and it would create it to, uh, this living grass on top of these homes. And it was a very pleasant place sometimes to sit there on that grass and enjoy uh, maybe catching some rays or enjoy the cool breeze that blew over the top of the house. You know, think of what those guys were doing. They were really going through the extra mile. They dug through that, that roof. They bore a burden for the man uh, whom they wanted to place before Jesus, the paralytic. And so they, they dug through thatch, they drug, dug through dirt, and they dug through crap to get this guy in front of Jesus. I think that's an amazing story. And bearing the burdens for others means that we can't just witness uh, in a drive-by faction. We can't just you know, slap a, a fish bumper sticker on the back of our cars and, and say, have someone say, oh, hey, they must be a follower of Christ. They've got a Christian symbol on the back of the car, and maybe he's going to church, and I better follow him to church. That just doesn't happen. That's not the normal reaction uh, to a Christian symbol that's slapped on the back of our cars. <laughs> but uh, to bear witness for someone means that when someone is hurting, you're there to listen. When somebody is celebrating a birth in their family, you're there to celebrate with them. You know, be at the shower. When somebody has lost a loved one, you're there for them to be a listening ear and perhaps go to the funeral and support them. You may not have known their loved one, but you go to support your friend whom you know. It's just all those things. We go that extra mile to bear a burden so that others will know Christ in our lives. Now, I want you to think about something today, friends. I want you to start to think about somebody who might need a good word in their life that might need some positive interaction with followers of Christ that might need Christ himself in their lives. I want you to start to pray for them. I want you to start to lift them up uh, when you get up in the morning and say, I lift up Tom or I lift up Susan or I lift up whoever and say, you know, give me the strength today or give me an opening, Lord, so that I might talk to them about you. I want you to begin to pray those prayers and see if that can't make a difference in your life as we seek to follow Christ and be the presence of Christ in the world today. Let's pray. Gracious God, help us to bear a burden for those uh, that we do not know even, that we would invite them to be part of uh, our great community of believers, that we'd invite them into your presence so that they might know your healing your love, and your compassion. We pray that it be so. We pray that we would be the conduits of that love, healing, and compassion. We pray for this in the name of Christ our Lord and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great Wednesday, friends, and God bless.